Hey folks, it's Gordon. Uh, this is, uh, as I'm recording this, is December the 13th of 2023. And this is uh, supposed to be the second episode or installment of uh, Love and Loss. And uh, this is a chronicling of my journey through grief and talking about what it's been like to be a caregiver and be a therapist and all of those things. If you saw the first episode, I hesitated in putting it out because um, I uh, just wondered if it was too raw for people. But after sharing it with a few people and a few of my colleagues, they said, no, this is good. So I'm going to continue to uh, do my chronicling here as I do my morning walks. Um, part of my daily routine is I'm on a, it's a, yeah, I'm really fortunate and they've got a beautiful place to walk. It's a green belt here in our town of Kingsport, Tennessee. And uh, it's nice to get out in nature and the outdoors. It's pretty cold this morning, as you can probably tell by the way I'm all bundled up here. But what I thought I'd talk about in this episode is maybe a little bit about what grief is. And I know that, uh, as I shared in the first episode, one of my niches as a therapist has always been grief and loss. I um, got into uh, that niche um, really through, uh, as a result of my uh, previous career, uh, after I graduated from college, you will give away my age here, in 1983 at Mars Hill College, or it was it's now Mars Hill University, I was uh, a psychology major, but my senior year of college, um, I got a job working for a funeral home, and I was uh, a night attendant, and I, <laughs> that probably sounds creepy to people, and I've got lots of funeral home stories, but... Anyway, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, but uh, when I graduated, I made the decision to go on to mortuary school and did that and uh, got the credentials and licensing to be a funeral director and also an embalmer. So needless to say, I know a lot about death. Um, I know a lot about, uh, I know what happens to people after they die and know what happens to our earthly remains and all of that kind of stuff so that plays into my own grief story a good bit but um, one of the things too is that when I was working in that industry I got really curious just about the grieving process and really learned a lot from some experts in the field at the time one in particular was uh, Alan Wolfelt, Dr. Alan Wolfelt, and uh, I don't know if it's still in existence, but he started uh, uh, a center in Colorado that was specifically for helping people with, I guess, really more complicated grief or complex grief, and so I learned a lot from him, and one of the quotes from him that has always resonated with me and stayed with me is, Grief shared equals grief diminished. And so that's part of the why behind why I'm doing this, this series. I realize too that my, everybody's grief is unique. And, um, you know, I know that there are some aspects of grief that are truly devastating for people like for example, the loss of a child. I can't think of anything more horrific for somebody to experience. Or somebody that has witnessed a violent death of someone else. Uh, I think of our military veterans and all of those folks that um, have maybe put themselves in harm's way. Law enforcement, EMS, firefighters, all of our public servants that... Uh, Put their put their really put their themselves out there, um, and so they've witnessed a lot of death and grief and trauma. And I've worked with a lot of those folks along the years. But one of the things I know about grief 
and I'm experiencing this myself. My wife died, I shared in uh, back in November of this year, 20, November 22nd, 2022. And uh, she had a long battle with breast cancer and a brain tumor. And eventually in June of this past year, we started hospice care and uh, she really beat the odds. I mean, she wasn't, wasn't supposed uh, to have lived more than five years. So we had this roller coaster ride of experiencing grief every time she would have kind of these near misses with her cancer. But um, one of the things about the grieving process is it's not something you get over. And I learned this from a colleague of mine. And uh, it is something we get through instead. It's something that we, all of us has to endure to some degree. In other words, we have to allow ourselves to go through the pain. Our tendency as human beings is, is we want to avoid pain. And I get it. And I can share here recently when I've been experiencing incredible waves of grief that just show up out of nowhere just how painful it is i can't think of any uh, human experience that is harder for anyone than grief and um yeah and so if you're listening to this and you're grieving um give yourself permission to lean into it um because that's the way we get through uh to avoid it just creates more problems down the road and can lead to other problems you know grief that is not addressed or loss um, has a tendency to pop up in other ways through either addiction or through um, chronic depression just health concerns because it does affect us physically and I'm, I'm feeling that myself I've had like this constant kind of crud <laughs> since my wife since but right before my wife died and and I know part of it is it's just um, not been sleeping well probably not been eating like I should and certainly not drinking enough water uh, because one other thing in thinking about self-care with grief is that you do cry a lot and that is uh, something that is kind of a normal kind of thing um, and that's a way that we kind of take care of grief and say that in that way. And so drink a lot of water because you can get dehydrated really quickly. Um, the other thing is um, find people to talk to. You know, I think my tendency is, is, you know, I don't want to burden people with my problems. I was talking had some plumbing problems the other day and my <laughs> my plumber came and I know his story he lost his son um, and um, uh, a few years ago and it was as he shared with me his son had a troubled troubled life and it was like uh, when he did die they they weren't weren't surprised and they were kind of anticipating it but he had evidently had some trouble with addictions and that sort of thing but um, anyway we were talking about the fact that we need to share what we're experiencing and and we were talking about having this uh, kind of our own needs as people that are grieving we don't want to burden people with what we're experiencing and so um, give yourself permission to talk to people because there are people that are willing to listen and if you were to think about it in terms of turning the tables and you had a friend that was grieving, what a blessing it would be for them to be willing to share with you and put themselves out there and be vulnerable. And so hopefully my sharing of my story here can be somewhat of a blessing to you. I know that sounds weird. Um, and. I'm going to continue through this journey so far this morning i'm doing okay uh, as i said in the last episode people ask me how i'm doing and kind of my answer is i'm just doing 
um, <laughs> just going through the motions. And um, the other thing about grief is it puts you in a terrible brain fog. I just, oh man, I just go walk from one room to another and think, what am I doing in here? What am I, why'd I come in here? And so <laughs> that's concerning <laughs> to say the least that when that happens, but it's normal. It's part of the grieving process. And, um, yeah, so thank you for being with me on this journey and hope to share more with you here and other morning walks. Um, and uh, thanks, thanks for being part of this journey. I know I said that already, but, uh, yeah, just thanks for listening. Love to get your comments. Love to get your feedback. Um, and also I'd love to, if anybody else out there is going through something similar uh, I'd love to connect and share share our stories because uh, that is the way we get through it is we share our stories and every time we tell the story about what has happened it takes on a new meaning and um, it's our way of um, making sense out of the hole that is left and that's what grief is is that our brain is trying to fill in the blank trying to make sense out of that um, that disjointing or that um, detaching, you know, because we are, you know, just thinking about attachment theory. When somebody dies or we go through some sort of loss, we have to detach. And so that's what causes a lot of our grief is the detachment. So take care, folks. I'm going to try to keep these short, try to keep them around. 10 minutes or or so but um yeah i'd love to hear back from you and um we'll have more to come just on my journey of what it's like to be grieving a spouse and uh what that's like i'll probably share some more of the backstory here in future episodes take care